Hello everyone, this is Arbaz from T-Break. Let's take a quick look at the Asus uh, M10 Nuvi phone, Asus Garmin Nuvi 10. This is the phone that you can see. It's uh, pretty sleek in size, it's nice, but uh, let's have a look at its interface. Uh, there we go. You've got a slide to unlock, which is very much uh, like the iPhone that we've seen. And here you go, that's the home screen. Again, very much iPhone-like. You've got a grid of icons and you can move the screen left or right. These icons at the bottom stay fixed, as you can see. Right, so let's just have a look at... Um, let's go into email. And as you can see, generally Asus has tried to make this quite finger-friendly, but at times when you're trying to... There, I mean, instead of trying to just scroll slowly, you kind of end up selecting items, which is a problem with the capacitive, uh, with, sorry, with the resistive screen, which is what this unit has, not a capacitive screen, and that becomes somewhat of an issue. Keyboard, uh, again, let's go into email, and let's just say that we want to do a new email, is uh, a bit hard to type in, um, in landscape mode. Uh, let's just say that, hello, this is being sent from my Garmin phone. So, well, yeah, I mean, you can see a few spelling mistakes and all that. Now, if you move the unit in this format, there we go, the accelerometer kicks in. Uh, it's a bit easier. I mean, you've got a bigger size to play with. Let's just bring the keyboard up and let's try that again. Hello. This is. Oops. Okay, let's go back. Well, I guess it selected another type of keyboard, unfortunately. Yeah, so it's a little bit hard to work. I mean, being a, being a, a resistive in nature. Um, again, you've got your. Well, you've got your phone screen over here. You can sort of just try to scroll through it. Uh, at times it just ends up selecting something instead of trying to scroll through it. Uh, right, so this is the interface. You've got a grid basically, a 3x3, and if you want just tap on this Windows key at the bottom. Now there's no backlight over here, so during dark it becomes a bit hard. You just have to sort of, you know, realize what you're doing. And you need a little bit of push on the screen. It's not as a touch as an iPhone or other Android-based device or even a BlackBerry Storm. And here you've got your familiar Windows type of interface. Uh, that is that. Let me just quickly show you the Nuvi as well. Uh, we don't have a GPS signal because we're inside at the moment, but uh, it, uh, it, it, it is actually a bit better than most of the other GPS um, phones that I've actually used. It's... Um, well, this is from, you know, a list from my office places close to the office. Uh, let's just say if I say Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. Let's see. Dunkin' Donuts. Now you can map or go to it. Some of the places, let me try something else. Let's just say this tailor shop over here. Okay click on go there you go you've got your Garmin navigation system which is actually pretty good it's um, it's a voice enabled system so turn by turn directions as well um, again since you don't have GPS it's just saying evading better accuracy so let me just quickly close that uh, let's just take a look Internet Explorer text messaging camera Facebook application calendar email music media gallery connected devices and at the bottom you've got call uh, which brings up your phone menu with the keypad. Uh, I've, I've always liked Windows Mobile for this. You can select people, uh, you know, just trying to go through that. It uh, brings up their numbers and all that, so it's it's nice that way. Uh, right, on the next screen you've got tasks, clock, the weather application, which uh, should get you the latest weather from Dubai. That's what I've set this. It's not connected through Wi-Fi at the moment. Uh, apologies for that. Wireless manager, which tends to give you, you know, uh, good connectivity options for you right away. If you click on Wi-Fi, it should enable Wi-Fi. Yeah, there we go. This little icon on top, it will do that. Uh, you can get somewhat of a status bar if you're accurate enough. You just kind of 
need to tap on top of the screen and here you've got your status, notifications and search feature as well. Uh, again this sliding interface works in some other places as well. Let me try to see if I can pull something else out for you. Uh, under phone obviously we've got uh, your contacts, your call log, your favorites. Um, yeah, I mean that's very much it. Uh, Active Sync is actually working through Google Apps at the moment. Uh, works all right. If you click on View Map over here, you're shown where you are. But again, since we don't have a GPS location here, it works without it. So that's pretty much it for the Asus Navi phone. It's a very nice looking interface. Unfortunately, the resistive screen spoils the uh, usability factor of this phone. It could have turned out quite nice, I think, if. Uh, if Asus decides to do one, Asus and Garmin decide to do one on an Android-based uh, OS, it might turn out quite a bit nicer. A 5 megapixel camera on the back, no flash, sleek phone as you can see, and fortunately marred by the slightly old Windows Mobile and the uh, resistive screen experience. For T-Break, this is Abbas Jafarelli. Thank you very much.